What's going on guys? Brandon from Ridlocker.com here and we got this week's comic book reviews. I'm starting off with the Batman Incorporated special. A little one shot to finish up the saga that was Batman Incorporated. Uh, now that it's disbanded, we just check out the different members and see where they're going. Um, what we might possibly see of them, you know, in the DC Universe now. That they're not part of this. But it's really cool. A lot of short stories. And we got Batcow. Batcow's in there. And uh, at the end... Kind of a cool little ending uh, that I enjoy with Batman, just kind of looking at the files and it says delete ar or archive Batman Inc. Yes or no? Which one does he choose? You have to find out when you read it, but I like this a lot. Uh, sad to see this series go. I'm giving this final issue a four out of five at Nerd Skull. What's up guys? So I got to read Uncanny Avengers number 11. And as I say whenever I review this, it's one of my favorite books. I love the Avengers, I love the X-Men. The fact that they're teaming up together and they have like a really good chemistry together is really awesome. And this issue kinda, uh, a, a lot of stuff's been building up. The twins are really, really, really messing things up for the whole team. And obviously we got everyone separated. Scarlet Witch is actually being held prisoner, so is Wonder Man. And you find out some really messed up things that they're gonna do to him. And not, on, not only that, but the four horsemen, the brand new four horsemen, are, are running amok, pretty much, causing havoc to everyone. Like, Dagon and Wolverine's fight is emotionally, like, heartbreaking. Like, what? That It just comes out of nowhere. And then the Sentry and Thor fight is awesome because it's just, the scale of it is, is crazy. Sentry and it's Thor. They're two huge heavy hitters. But then it's like, it takes a re really weird twist. And it's like Sam Raimi, like, totally directed the scene with, like, the Sentry doing one of the... Not grossest things, I mean I've seen some pretty gross things, but it's like, whoa, I did not expect that at all. And But it was cool, it was so cool. It was like a Halloween issue in August. It was so cool, so cool. So anyways, I really love this book. The last page is really awesome. The, the What it's setting up for, how it got there, it's really dark, it's really gritty. You know this team's gonna pull it out though. I mean, Captain America's on the team and Havoc's there too, so it's gonna, it's gonna rule. I can't wait to see it. Check it out. Five out of five nerd skulls, easily, easy, easy, five out of five. Hey there nerds, Jim here with my review this week and it is Lazarus number three. If you're not reading Lazarus from Image Comics, I highly recommend you jump on this book. Obviously it's only three issues in, so it's easy to catch up on it. It tells the story of the future and people are now separated by class, basically wealth. And if you're rich, super, super rich, you're set. If you don't have anything and then you can't serve the rich, you're called waste. And it's exactly that, you got nothing. In issue three, we're following the events of the war of the Carlisle family and the Moray family. And it is just heating up, but we're seeing bits and pieces that the Carlisle family isn't all on the same page. We're seeing some infighting, we're seeing some incest, which is interesting. And we're seeing the youngest son, Jonah, basically working with his sister and not doing good things that are going to be played out against the Carlisle family. I'm very curious to see where that goes. The uh, Lazarus for Carlisle family forever is really, really dedicated to her father as the way it should be, as the way it is for that family. And he sends her on a secret mission to meet with the Mores. And we get some revelations coming out. They try and make a deal. She actually meets up with their, the More Lazarus, who is Joachim. And they've had a relationship in the past, but they were very, very young. So it's interesting to see where that's going to go. I really like how this ended. I really, really recommend you jump on it. I'm gonna give it four out of five Nerd Skulls. Hey guys, Haley here with my review of Thanos Rising number five. And sadly, this is the last issue in the series, but it is a really good one. Um, so I, where we are in the story is that Thanos has killed pretty much everybody from his life, but he has one left to prove his love to death. So he travels back to Titan, to find his father and there's a lot of really great revelations between that and I just I, I don't want to even go any further into it because it's just such a great story you need to just read it on your own I'm giving it five nerd skulls all right next I have Justice League number 23 the finale to the Trinity War this is nuts this issue is absolutely crazy and I can't wait to see what goes on in Forever Evil, because that's what this leads into. Um, one of the members of the Justice League kind of dies, like, 
one is gone. I don't know where he is. The other one is in like super critical condition. And I really want to see what happens at the end of the first issue of Forever Evil because uh, the heroes are screwed, it looks like. It's insane. So I love this. I love this story. I thought it was a great story to lead into something like this. I'm giving it five out of five nerd skulls. Let me know what you guys thought. All right, guys. So I also got to read Thor, God of Thunder, number 12. And I thought the God Bomb storyline was the end of the three Thors. I thought that was it. I was gladly wrong. Um, we actually got King Thor and Young Thor still kind of going in, in the story. We're kind of picking up on where they go after uh, their giant battle. Like everyone's returning after a long, long time and, and kind of catching up. This definitely is like a huge, huge, huge step on the brakes in terms of momentum. Like, it, but it's in a good way. You know, we've had a lot of crazy craziness go down for the last couple issues. And this is like, all right, let's get reacquainted with characters. This is a brand new run, a brand new writer. We got to actually kind of like build the Thor universe up a little bit. Heartbreaking moment in the middle with the Avenger Thor and Jane Foster. And oh my God, I did not know this happened. I don't know if this is in Marvel continuity right now, like before this, but oh, Jane Foster. I don't want to say anything. I don't want to ruin anything, but I'm, I'm feeling for it. But it's cool because... Thor's got another little love interest, and she's, she's moved on too, so it doesn't matter, but can't wait to see where this goes, especially with the last, like, story of King Thor, like, he's, he comes back to Midgard, looks awesome, I can't wait, and, the, like, the preview image for the next one looks like they're setting up the bad guys and, like, the movie tie-ins and stuff like that, I mean, the movie's almost here, so it's cool to see that they're setting that up in the actual comic, and hopefully we can get some really good writers doing some really cool things to get people set up for these characters. So I'm stoked. I love where Thor's going. I'm gonna give it four to five nerd skulls because it was a little slow, but it was cool either way. Check it out. Let me know what you think. It was probably five, but whatever, it's four. Hey there, nerds. I got to review Aquaman number 23. Obviously we pick up from the events of Aquaman 22 where we have Aquaman, uh, Mara, in Zabel fighting Neris, then his army. We have the three off to try and uh, free Orm, and we have the scavenger attacking Atlantis. I was stoked. These are awesome. It's got to come to a head. Man, this was kind of disappointing. We have Arthur and Mara escape Zabel. Cool. It's got to happen. Awesome. We really don't see much development on what's going on with Orm. There's bickering as they're saying, how are we gonna get him out? Let's go in just attack. Hey, let's go in in stealth mode. All right, whatever. Then Arthur makes it back to Atlantis. Cool, because the scavenger there, scavenger has a plan. He wants to take out Arthur. Urn was leading the army, very cool. And I just feel like they cheated. And we get one of those dot, 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 six months later. It's like, oh, okay, that's right. It's villains month. I guess we didn't plan that very well. Now, I hope that wasn't the case, but that's the way I read into it. The one bright spot that I really enjoyed, and I love when superheroes do this, is they restrain from using all their power. Aquaman unleashed everything, and it was brilliant to see. I loved that one moment. Fantastic, and it truly saved Atlantis at that moment. But now we're six months in the future, and we have no idea what's going on. For that, and my disappointment, I'm only gonna give Aquaman number 23, two, out of, two and a half out of five Nerd Skulls. I got to read New Avengers number nine this week, and where we left off in Infinity was that some memories have been retrieved from Black Bolt to where Thanos now knows that almost all of the Infinity Gems have been destroyed except for one. He doesn't know where it is, so he is sending out the Black Order or the Cole Obsidian to find that gem, and they're going to all the uh, members of the Illuminati to find it. And just the, the lengths that they go to are really interesting. It's very uh, three-dimensional. There's a lot going on with it. There's a lot of action as well. So there's a lot going on in this story. I'm going to give it five nerd skulls. All right, next I got to read All-Star Western, number 23. We still got Jonah Hex in the modern world running around doing some stuff. Uh, he's This issue's kind of slow. Like The action all takes place at the beginning. And then there's a lot of just kind of filler in the issue, but it ends with something interesting. I didn't realize he'd be staying in this time for so long. I'm just interested, interested to see what their game plan is with this when they do send him back, if they send him back, what goes on. But either way, I think this is great. I'm giving it four to five nerd skulls. All right, guys. So I get to read Star Wars Legacy number six. Really awesome issue. 
I one of my favorite series to read just because it's it's a fr like no nah, I wouldn't say it's a fresh take because we've already had more legacies but it's it's building the expanded universe and these awesome characters that come from great backgrounds great families you know like oh it's so awesome she's a solo and she's like in this issue she totally comes into her like no I have to stand up for what's right I've been like ignoring my past for so long oh, I'm taking up my call of destiny and it's it's cool it's it's cool to see that in any character any hero that you want to get behind and the, like the Jedi's and everyone else in the background actually has like a cool way of separating you know going you can see that there's going to be some cool like storylines coming out of all of this like it's it's the end of i would say somewhere around where usually a story ends its first story arc it leaves a lot open um and like you know they're gonna they're probably gonna do some crazy things in the next couple issues and i can't wait for that um this one's a little slower it's a little more you know it's not as actiony it does have some crazy cool sith fights which is are awesome because the sith are like coming back with vengeance obviously because they're sith um, but, uh, yeah, I'm just excited for where this is going. All Star, Star Wars titles actually right now are pretty dope. So, uh, you guys should be reading most of them, at least, if not all of them. Uh, I'm gonna give this four out of five minute skulls. Read it or weep. You're probably gonna cry though. I got to read My Little Pony number 10 this week, and I'm very happy to say that as the second part of the story that we got last month, this one was much better. It felt a little bit more... Uh, like it had a direction where it was going. Where the last one, uh, Macintosh just kept running into people, but this one it seemed like he, w he was trying more to get towards his goal. So while it was fun, it still felt like something was actually happening and I was getting to an end. So this is a much more uh, interesting story. I'm gonna give it four out of five nerd skulls. All right, I got to review Itty Bitty Hellboy this week. Art Balthazar and Franco are two awesome guys and I've been a fan of Tiny Titans since it started. I love everything that they do and when I found out at Comic-Con they were doing Itty Bitty Hellboy, I just, I knew I had to read this because I'm a huge Hellboy fan. I love BPRD, I love all of that. And they do a great job with this. This first issue is kind of just sort of introducing the characters they're using and uh, kind of what's going on. But it's, it's a lot of fun. If you've read their other stuff, this goes right along with it. Roger is hilarious. I love what they're doing with that. And this is, it's just fun. These guys write fun books and they're fun guys. And I highly suggest picking this up because there's humor in there for the Hellboy reader. And you can have your kids read it too. It's awesome. Giving it five out of five nerd skulls. Great job. All right, guys. So I got to review regular show number three. Uh, it's one of my favorite cartoon series ever, like with, you know, Chowder and Adventure Time and all these awesome things. It has really cool, cool stories. The show has a great formula, and I've said it before, I'll say it again, I'll say it a million times from now, the comic is just as good. And the last one, it was, the last one I read at least, was cool, but it, it had like a continuation, like, oh, I gotta come back to this, and like, that kind of sucks when it comes to regular show, because it's such a 15 minute, it wraps up real quick. So like 11 minute show wraps up real quick and you're done when you're reading the comic i want that and this issue gave me three stories where it's just one and done you read it it's funny it's crazy it's cool it does exactly what what regular show does and i was excited for every single one of them uh the one with the uh crockett and tubs was probably one of the funniest regular show things i've ever read in my life so i'm definitely gonna give this five out of five nerd skulls it's adorable it's awesome it's mordecai and rigby and the covers that you can get for this are awesome. Like the, all of them are really cool and really unique and like give you a different take on all these characters. So check it out. Five out of five nerd skulls easily because it's, it's a regular show. So go buy it now. <laughs>